one of the things that has been pressed impressed upon our hearts, and, and Pastor Flowers will be coming forth with some series, with um, a series here in the very near future, talking about the signs, the signs of the time, the signs in which we're, li you've been, we, we're living in currently. If you have heard him for the last few weeks, he's been making references in regards to the time in which we've been living in. So as I was before the Lord as to what I should share, it was impressed upon my heart about this idea of the appointment, the appointment, um, the appointed time. And here's one of the things about our life, just on a natural level, day to day, what happens with us is this. We gauge our lives by appointments. Have you ever noticed that? You have to be a, at work at a certain time. What does that do? It causes you or should cause you to get up at a certain time, right? To go to bed at a certain time, right? It's amazing how appointments cause you to gauge your time. Uh, if you have a, a, a doctor's appointment, what do you do? That doctor's appoint, appointment, it causes you to really, it gauges your whole day. You schedule your whole day around meeting that appointment. And that's pretty much how we live our lives. We have these, these places that we have to be. In order for you to be here this morning, especially if you're going to be here on time, you had to do certain things in order to be here on time, right? Yes, yes, you did. So here's the thing. In everyday life, we, we do what we do in accordance to time. Now, here's the reality of life, and that is the fact that God is the designer of time. And here's the reality about that is that what God does, he does by his time. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it by my time. He does it by his time. Now, my place is to find out his time and to flow with his time. And see, here's the reality. We are in a particular time period right now. And here's the thing about time. When you move into another time segment, things shift. Many times, um, the intensity level is different. The, 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 um, the expectations are different. The effect on you are different. If, if anybody with any spiritual aptitude whatsoever if they look around, if they see where we're living at, there's been a shift. Things are not the same. There is a rapid effect and happening of occurrences and in, in, in our day, things are just happening. It's almost like just like a, somebody's firing off a machine gun. Things are happening so fast. And so one of the things that I believe and one of the things that is heavy upon my heart as it is on Pastor Flowers' heart is this idea of being ready for the time, be, uh, flowing with the time, doing what's necessitated for this time. See, the thing about time is that it moves you out of one sequence of life into a different sequence. And see, I can't do what I used to do in this sequence in this sequence because this is a different time. Now, what I want to do in a short period of time that I have left this morning is that I want to take you to the scripture because the scripture is an excellent place. Here's what God does. God not only tells us how to live, he shows us through his word how to do it. He even gives us many examples as to how not to do it. And so one of the things that God does in his book, the Bible, is that, number one, this book is a book of time. It's, some people call it dispensation. Some uh, people who study scriptures, they refer to it as dispensation. That big word simply means time periods. And what happens in time periods is that God does things. He deals with people differently in different time periods. Now, here's the thing about the, the reality of life is that you and I, all of us, have a time period assigned to our lives. Listen, listen, we are here today, but we will not always be here. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're working where you're working now, but you will not always be working. Why? Because there's a time assigned. And there will come a day where there will be a shift and a change. Now, ultimately, when it comes to God's time schedule, if you are a believer, what you and I are destined for, we're destined for to stand before the throne of God for the, for the rewards. And that which we have done while in the body and serving him, we will be rewarded for that. And see, we're destined for that. What does that mean? We're on course for that. And here's the thing. You can't jump off. You're on course for it. So this morning I want to talk to you about, about what the Bible says just a little bit about this issue of time. Look with me in Romans chapter 13, if you would, real quick. The scripture reads here, and this is the Amplified Run. It says, besides this, know what a critical hour this is. How it is high time now for you to wake up out of your sleep. 
roused to reality. For salvation, final deliverance is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Now, here's the thing that is intriguing to me. This was written back in the first century, right? We're living now in the 21st century. And this is what, the Holy Spirit can only do this. It is just as applicable, in fact, even more so now than it was then. Because if this was the case 2,000 years ago, what about now in our time? That means that we're 2,000 years closer. So he says here, he says, know what hour it is. Now see, he's not talking about physical things. He's talking about there's a spiritual dimension. And you have to be able to know what's happening in the spiritual dimension. And it helps you, if you know what's happening in the spiritual dimension, to understand the natural dimension. What does that mean? It means that there's a reason why things are happening. There's a reason why our nation is in the state it is today. There's a reason why our world is in the nation, in the state it is today. And there's a reason why things are progressing as they are today. But you won't find the reason in the natural realm. It is in the spiritual realm. Oh, are you listening to me? It's very, very important. Look with me. Here's another scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 17. The scripture says, And I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. So the writer says here is that in God's economy, the way God has designed things, there is a time assigned to every purpose and every work. It is not something that just happens. There's a time assigned to it. And see, here's the thing. God has called me into this realm of wisdom that I would be a person or a people, if you refer to the body of Christ, that we would not be in darkness or what that term means. I would not be oblivious to the spiritual time clock. I must be aware of it. I must know what's going on. I must know how close things are. Because how, what does that mean? It means that's the way I live my life now. See, if I'm oblivious, see, here's the thing. If I did not have an appointment, if I did not have a doctor's appointment, I could just lay around, right? right. Just kind of, you know, go about your day. But if you've got an appointment, that's different, isn't it? Okay, let's keep going. You still awake? Sure. Now, let's, let's go back. I'm going to take you back to, because what the Bible does, it teaches, it doesn't just tell us, it teaches us. And it gives us an example. We're going to go all the way back to the example of the nation of Israel. Now, there are many examples that you can use from the nation of Israel. But here's the thing. I want to key in just for a few moments on this particular aspect, dealing with this idea of how God had, had promised Israel, had given them a certain land that they were supposed to go into and conquer. And he told them to do this at a particular time. And they were not ready. They missed their time. Look with me in the scripture. Here's Numbers chapter uh, 13, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Cana, which I am given to the Israelites. For each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. Now, here's the question that, that if you're going to study the Bible, you need to ask questions, right? Yes, you do. So my question would be, why did God say that to him? Why did God say, send people into the land and check it out first? You would think, well, if you just looked at that verse, you might think, well, that's, that seems reasonable to me. But let's look a little bit closer. In order to interpret the Bible, many times you have to go to other scriptures that help you interpret what other scriptures are saying. That's what we're going to do right now. Are you with me? Look with me in Deuteronomy, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1. In the book of Deuteronomy, in fact, the book of Deuteronomy, is, it's, it's a retelling of the law. Why we have the book of Deuteronomy is because the, the old generation died, and God had to re-instruct the new generation. So he had to re-visit um, with them what he had told the old generation to do, which they failed to do. So in, 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 in the book of Deuteronomy, what we have in beginning at verse uh, 21, this is in Deuteronomy chapter 1. Notice what the scripture says. This is, see the Lord your God has given you the land. Now, let's back up a little bit. What, what was God doing? Because again, in life, here's how you live real life. Real life is not based on what I think or what I'm doing. It's based on what God's doing. 
because ultimately it's going to only be about God, believe it or not. See, here's the thing. God had a plan. He told his servant Abraham when he called Abraham that he was going to use through this one man all nations, not just one nation, all nations were going to be blessed. Then he said he was going to make this man a, a, the father of nations, not nation, nations. And so what did God do? God told him what he was going to do, and then God orchestrated the plan to get it done. And so God calls this, this uh, Abraham, eventually he dies, and, and that family grew to be about 70 people. And we understand the story about Joseph and Joseph, how he was sold into slavery and ended up in Egypt and going, he was in prison there. And you would think if you, see here how you could miss the point. You could miss the point if you thought this was just about Abraham, just about Joseph, just about Isaac, just about Jacob. No, it was about this big plan that God was working out. These were just means in which God, our people, that God was using in order to do it, to work out his plan. Are you following me? So he, these 70 people, they're in a case and there's a famine and they don't have food, but Joseph is already in Egypt. Here's God working that plan. And Joseph, he uh, interprets a dream and, uh, and, and God uses the, the, his interpretation of dream, Pharaoh's dream to bring him out of prison. He becomes a second in command and, and he's put over the food stuff and he's the administrator of, 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 of the food supply. And guess what God does? He sends his, this family to Joseph. They're reunited and God God feeds the family. Here, but here's the point. It's not just about that family. What's God doing? God is working on building a nation. Do you hear what I'm saying? Why? Because he has a plan. And God's plan always works well. How? In his time. And so he works this plan and he, he, he leaves this family there in Egypt and they grow and they multiply and they're left there for about 430 years, Right? But here's the plan of God. It's not just about these people. It's not just about these families that have grown to about two to three million people. No, God now has to bring them out. Why? Because God is working his plan. So now he brings them out of Egypt miraculously because that which God is going to do in accordance to his plan, no man can stop it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how great the army of Egypt is. It doesn't matter how great the obstacles are. It doesn't matter how people act. It doesn't matter about their attitudes. It doesn't matter about their disposition. It doesn't matter about their weapons. If God's plan is being worked, nobody can stop it. Oh, come on, somebody. And see, here's the thing. This is why I have to yield to God's plan because it's my plan. I can be defeated. I can fail. But if I'm hooked up with God's plan, I can't lose because God can't lose. Oh, come on, somebody. So we see here in Deuteronomy chapter one, see the Lord God has given you the land. What's the land? Because if you're going to have a nation, guess what? You got to have land, right? And see, this land had already been promised to Abraham. So God says this, he says, if God is giving you the land, now they're not in the land, but God gave them the land. Go up and take possession of it as the Lord, the God of your fathers told you, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. So here's, here's what God is saying. Here's the land, I've given it to you, go take it. I wonder what their response was because, again, we're finding out why in Numbers chapter 13 they said what they said. Let's keep going here. Let's keep going. Are you still awake? So here, look at verse 22. This is what Moses is saying. He's recanting the history, what happened with the older generation. And he says to them, he says, this is what you did. Then all of you came to me and said, let us send men ahead to spy out the land for us and bring back a report about the route we are to take and the towns we will come to. Uh-oh, here's the problem. See, if you read Numbers, you think, well, God did it. Here's what happened. They suggested this. And here's what God does sometimes. You make foolish suggestions. He just says, okay, go do it. <laughs> That's what happened here. Foolish suggestion. How do we know it's foolish? Look at what happened. He didn't say go look around at the land. He didn't say go measure it. He said go take it. Are you with me? So he goes on there. Look at verse 23. I have to go real quick. You understand. The idea seemed good to me, so I selected 12 of you. 
one man from each tribe, they left and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Iskal and explored it. So they came up with the idea. Moses consults God and God says, Moses, tell them to go do it. That's their plan. Let them go do it. Let's keep on going. But notice he keeps, now he's continuing. He says, but you were unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, the Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Look at verse 28. Where can we go? Our brothers have made us lose heart. Who were they referring to? They were referring to those men that they had sent to check the place out. The very men, they, you remember, they sent how many men? Twelve, right? And ten of them were just weak backs, right? Just weak people, and they saw what was going on, and they brought that report back to uh, the, 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 the nation or the people there, and they told them how, how, yeah, they got good grace, but they got bad people there. They got some strong people. They got tough people there, and we can't win. So the very suggestion that they came up with was the very suggestion that caused them the great deal of trouble and caused them defeat. If they had listened to God in the first place and simply gone up as God said, go take it. But see, they didn't want to go take it. They wanted to go look. And see, there's, there's something happens when you want to go look. See, we want to go feel it out and think about it and, and wear it out and, 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 and weigh it out and see if this is what we should do. If God said do it, that's what you should do. Are you listening to me? So here's the point. Here you have a nation called by God, given an inheritance, given the land, as God had promised it to Abraham. And what happens? God tells them, okay, it's time. He says to them, you've been going around this place. And at that time, they had come out of Egypt, and they had been going around in this, in this, in this, um, this particular area for about two years. And God says to them, okay, you've been here long enough. It's time. Go take the land. But because they sent people there who were filled with unbelief and doubt, and here's the thing, they missed their time. See, they didn't understand that when God says it's time, guess what? It's time. It may not be human time, but it's God's time. It may not look like everything's going to work out, but if God said this is the time, this is the time. And see, we have to move by God's time. And, I, and, and see, here's the thing. The reality of this, and this is why, why I use this particular story as an analogy, because it directly relates to where we are today. Listen, God has called the church to be the church. God has not called the church to be something else. He's not called the church to be a group of entrepreneurs. He's not called the church to be a group of people who, who know how how to, who politicized the world. He's not called the church to be people who know who had to put their finger up and, 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 and go by the winds of what people's opinions are. He's called the church to be the church. And it doesn't matter who says what, God declares the church is the church. And so what the church must recognize is that even though people don't like what we preach, even though people don't like our stance, even though people don't like what we do, the fact is God told us to do it and and therefore we have authority to do it. It's God's way and not man's way. It's God's time and not man's time. Oh, come on somebody. See, that's what he called the church to be. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't ask what the conditions were like. He didn't ask if they, he didn't declare, well, if they like it, if you can do it. If they don't like it, you might not be able to do it. No, he didn't care what they like. He declared that it's his time. Yeah. See, here's the thing, here's the thing. I must learn to live my life based on God's time. And so here's the thing. In this time in which I live today, how can I orchestrate my life in regards to what God wants me to do? And see, here's the thing. The pressures of the world are, are, are pressing in on every side. There's, you've got all the social media. You've got all the, uh, the, the opinions of people. You've got the, 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 trying, to change the, you know, trying to change the definition of marriage. All these things are happening.
happening at the same time. And here's the sad fact. You have some members of the church who are looking at what the world is doing and then coming back and trying to change the church based on what the world is doing. It's God's time. It's God's time. It's not man's time. It's God's time. Listen, listen, God's t man's time is going to come to an end. God's time is eternal. Men come and they go, but God is forever. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. Glory to God. So here's the reality. Here's the reality. I'm not, I'm not here to live based on man's time. I'm not here live, live, to live my life based on, on what the circumstances around me say. I'm here to live based on what God has commanded me to do. That's the only reason I live. Now here's the thing, here's the thing. Because that is the case and because of all the pressures around me, it means that I'm going to have to press in like never before. I'm going to have to hear God like never before. I'm going to have to be humble before him like never before. Why? Because of the pressure that is around me and I don't want to be uh, drawn off. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to go after uh, this idea of trying to be uh, appeasing to people. If Israel had only known the time, God said, you've been around this place too long. Two years you've been here. It's time. It's time. But because they missed their time, it wasn't just two years. It turned out to be 40 years. It was 38 additional years. And here's the thing. All those who decided to miss their time, they died. Here's the thing. Sometimes when you miss God's time, you miss it forever. Listen to him. Listen, listen. Our world is, is bombarded with deception, lies, compromise. Now, I, I want you to say this, and I, I got to leave. I got to stop here because I know I'm watching the clock. But here's the thing. Listen, listen. Here's the thing about time. What happened with Israel? You, you got two or three million people. They're, they're there in the desert. And listen, life happens, right? You got to wash clothes, right? You got to clean. You got to eat. You got to feed the children. Children going to play, right? Life happens. People, you know, communicate. Families have arguments, disturbances, right? Isn't that life? Right? Life happens. But here's the problem with that. It's so easy to let what's happening in life distort the bigger picture of God's time. You know, people walk through stuff. They walk through attitudes and disposition and things that they're challenging and they react different ways. And all those kinds of things happen in life. But see, here's the thing. I can't let those things cause me to miss the bigger picture because the bigger picture is God's time. And see, because they were so immersed in life, what people were saying, what people were doing, how things were looking, when God said, it's time for you to take that land. They were not interested. They didn't think they were able. Why? Because all their attention was on everyday life. Their focus was everyday life. That's all they knew. As I close this morning, you're here right now, but here's the reality. This time is not forever. Every day that you and I live, we get closer to eternity. And I know, you know, here's the thing what happens. You know, they, they blame preachers. You know, you preachers always trying to scare people. Listen, listen, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I think about this. What kind of person would I be if, I'm, if I drive home one night, it's midnight, and I, I drive up in my driveway, and my neighbor's house is on fire? And I say this, you know, it's late. It's really not nice to disturb people. They could be sleeping. What kind of person would I be? Now, here's the thing. What kind of person would I be? A pastor flowers, stand behind his pulpit and give you nice stories. 
give you, give you uh, what's happening uh, in the secular world and the, the latest trends. The, the, the greatest ways to draw people. How to become popular. And you're destined for eternity. I can't think of anything more cruel to do to anybody. To know about eternity, to know God's time and not to tell people about it. And so here we are. Let me say this to you. Here's, here's eternity. Just like you close your eyes every night and fall asleep and you wake up. One day you and I, we're going to close our eyes and we're going to wake up. But it won't be this world. It's going to be another world. And here's the reality. The world that we wake up in will be determined by the decisions that we make in this world. Amen. Listen to me. Listen, listen. I think about this and, and my kid and I students, you can tell them, you, you can ask them. That. We talk about this a lot. I think about the generations that are past. All the people that have transversed this world. And now they're in eternity. I think about this. What if, what if we could talk to them? What if we could ask them, how, how, how would you do things differently? The opportunities you have, you, have, you no longer have, how would you do things differently? What would they say? You think preachers are adamant. It'll be no comparison. I recall the 16th chapter of the book of Luke, the rich man and Lazarus. Here's a, here's a man who lived and walked this earth, cared nothing about God. But when he got into eternity, when his eyes opened in eternity, the scripture says, in hell, he lifted up his eyes. And here's the thing, here's the thing. You know what happened with that man? He had a passion for his brothers. He didn't want his brothers to come to such a place. He knew he was doomed, but he didn't want his brothers to come. He probably had a greater passion, a level of passion than any of us have. That was his reality. Here's the question. When I close my eyes, what world am I going to wake up in? Somebody said, oh, it, it ain't no world. That This is all there is. Who told you that? Was it anybody who ever been there? See, I, I'm getting my information from somebody who's been there. So here's, here it is. When you close your eyes, what world are you going to wake up in? Somebody said, I don't know. Well, you need to be known. You need to be very sure. Because if you don't know, that probably means you're going to wake up in the wrong world. And once you wake up in that world, there ain't no turning back. It's done. Every head bow right now. Every head bow. Every head bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, you're so loving to us. So loving. So kind. That you would unveil the truth to us because you love us. And Lord, your time is set. Nobody can change your time. But we pray that we have hearts that would yield, yield to your time. And so we pray right now in Jesus' name for this audience, everybody in here you love so dearly. And you want them to wake up in the glory world. You want them to take full advantages of the opportunities that you've given them now. And yet some, because of the pressure of the world, the pressures of life have been pulled off course. But this is an opportunity. And so I pray, Father, that your mercy would prevail today and touch hearts. God, in the name of Jesus, may, may the power of the truth of your word pierce through our consciousness. In the name of Jesus. Here's my call this morning. Quite simply, here's the thing. If you don't no. When you close your eyes, that last time on earth, 
what world you'll wake up in. This is your opportunity to know. This is it. Maybe you are a believer. You're, you have walked with the Lord for a while, but then the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life has captured your heart. And you're sitting there, you're not sure. You don't know. Maybe you've been somebody who's been coming to church, but you don't know. Why wait? Pastor Flowers has, has preached a, a message talking about these, these cycles of life. Everybody has to be born. Everybody has to be born again. Everybody is going to die. Everybody has to be resurrected from the dead and everybody has to stand before the judgment. Everybody, without exception. So where are you? Where are you? The mercy of God calls you right now. Listen, if this is something you need to make right today, it is such an important decision. You don't want to be thrown by anybody else's opinion. Regardless of what they think, listen, they don't have a place to put you. So, here it is. If you're ready to make it right, Raise your hand. Shoot it up right now. Just put it up in there. I, I want to make it right. I want to make it right. I want to know what world I'm going to wake up in. I want to know. I want to know. I have to know. I have to. I see some hands going up, and I thank God for your courage. I thank God for your boldness. This is the right thing to do. This is the most important decision. All the other decisions, changing jobs, uh, moving into another house, uh, you know, cutting your grass, all that kind of stuff, that's temporal stuff. Now we're dealing with eternal stuff. Where are you? Where are you? I'm going to ask those who raise your hand, would you please boldly just stand up, stand up right now. Stand up and come on down to the front right now. Just come on right now where you are. Get up out of your seat. Come on down. We're not begging people. This is reality. This is God's command. My God. Maybe you have been in church or been around church or maybe your family has been around church, but you don't know. This is your time. Maybe you are here. This is the, another call. Maybe you're here and you, you are looking for a house where you can be planted, where you can grow. Right now you're kind of floundering around and, you, and you're looking for a church that's going to teach you the truth of God's word and you feel that this is the place for you. If that's you, this is a time for you to come now. Come right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Those of you at the altar, would you just look up at me? Just look up at me right now. If you would, please just look up at me. I just want to say this to you. Listen, I admire your courage. You have made the most quality of all decisions. This is the decision. And maybe, you know, um, it doesn't matter what has happened. Here's the thing. God loves you. The devil is a liar. Jesus is Lord. And he loves you. And here's what he wants. He wants the predestined plan that he already has for your life. He wants you simply just to yield to it and live, live it out. It's a good plan for you. It's a good plan. And so here's what's going to happen. You're at a place that takes these eternal things very seriously. And we're going to do everything we can to help you to be an encouragement to you. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you just to pray with me right now and then I'm going to release you because we want to, see, this is not just something that we do here. This is a lifestyle. And so we're going to help you. So would you just pray with me? Would you say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love. I thank you that you died for me. You suffered for me. You were buried for me. You rose from the dead for me. And Lord, I choose now to confess you 
as Lord, I choose to believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I declare, because of that reality, I'm sozo, I'm saved, I'm delivered from the power of the enemy. In Jesus' name, I declare that reality. Thank you. In Jesus' name, I praise you for it. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Listen, because we care so much and consider this such a serious issue in your life and we want to walk with you and just be an encouragement to you I'm going to ask you to go with my brothers right here they're just going to uh, walk with you and just help you and just encourage you please go with them right now if you would please give them a hand as they go God bless you amen 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 would you please stand with me please as we go today please keep in perspective there's God's time it's people's time. God's time is the time that counts. We are a people that are called to live by a higher time system. What time is it in which we live? It is a time to draw closer. It is a time to be more focused. It is a time to hear God, to yield to him, to obey him, to be alert to him. It's that time. Father, as we close today in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your hand upon your people. I thank you, Lord, for strengthening them with your divine might as they go. And I thank you that they are people that are sensitive by the Spirit to your time, that they will walk in accordance with your time. We believe that. We receive that in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Most High God. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.